Well, I feel like I have to take a big breath for this one because I know it's going to be opinionated. I know everyone is going to have their own say. I kind of thought this was going to be the case when we did actually get official confirmation that horses were coming in an expansion pack for The Sims 4 just because they feel like one of those topics that people are super, super passionate about or just feel like they don't particularly need them in the game. But let's get into my full review. Basically a condensed version of all the videos that I've done recently going through Create a Sim, the townies, the world, gameplay, cross pack compatibility, all of that and talk about my thoughts and feelings on it all. Of course we are going to start off where every Sims 4 save starts and that is in Create a Sim. I will say my Create a Sim overview did come across a little bit harsh. I will still say I do feel like the hairs feel similar. I feel like outside of the clothes clothing categories there wasn't too much, especially for the younger sims. That was a definite disappointment for me, especially when like kid sims actually can ride horses. And yes, they have the available like western style riding gear available to them. They also have the option to wear a helmet if you want them to within Create a Sim, if you do want to go for more of like the English style riding. However, I was purely just expecting more for the kids. My standouts for Create a Sim were definitely the the dirty swatches. I really, really like the inclusion of those. I kind of do personally wish that they were tied into gameplay a little bit more so that your clothes could actually get dirty like as you are making nectar or if you do get booked off your horse. Obviously, you can tell that story. You can use them for sims who are like into gardening. I did like the Native American rep within Create a Sim. I do feel as if that representation felt flat in the rest of the pack outside of the townies. I love the townies. We did actually get a base game update that included three Native American hairstyles as well, which I'm always a really, really big fan of when they know they're going to do representation in a pack. But then for the people who can't get the pack, they also allow players to have that representation within base game. However, I still stand by the fact and I know this is a me thing because obviously I am in a very privileged position to own all of the packs for The Sims 4. It does feel similar to a lot of other assets that we have. We have a lot of like outerwear, like denim, jackets. I do like the corduroy jackets, I will say, but it feels similar to Strangerville seasons and some of the pieces also feel like Jungle Adventure because of like the denim shirts. A lot of the everyday pieces, especially tops, I will say I was heavily disappointed with the bottoms that came with this pack. I still think it's really, really weird that we didn't get a masculine like boot cut or kind of a flared out jeans. We basically just got base game jeans, but that had big belt buckles. I've tried to say that sentence about a thousand times. The tops are quite usable outside of Chestnut Ridge. They are usable in other worlds, which I actually quite like. I'm not a massive fan of the full body. They do feel different. Like obviously we have the big duster jacket for masculine sims. However, I don't really feel myself using that outside of, you know, the storylines and like Chestnut Ridge. So altogether, create a sim. If you don't have all of the packs, I think it's gonna feel like different enough and it is also usable enough. But for me personally, there wasn't a lot of standard out objects within it. The world I actually feel is stunning. I'm a really, really big fan of Chestnut Ridge. I feel like the team did an incredible job with it. I absolutely love the trails. There's not like loads of things to do. Like obviously you have rest stops, you can go to the toilet, you can use the bushes. I feel like a fair few places do have the new grills dotted around. So they've kind of tied in the new, I'm not gonna say new gameplay elements because those are obviously all objects that we already had within the game, but they have made it feel as if you can take your horse on these trails. You can spend a couple of days outside. Obviously, if you own outdoor retreat, you can bring a tent with you. If you just have growing together or you only have horse ranch, you can bring one of the new sleeping bags and like sleep under the stars. You can also take your horse bed with you as that is actually an inventory placeable object. I haven't tried dragging it out into the world outside of your lot, but horses can just sleep standing up. So technically they don't even need a bed. So it does feel like you can kind of go on little explorations and hacks. Don't get me wrong, the world isn't like big enough to feel like you are like trailing through like all these wondrous mountains. Even Galloping Gulch, which is my personal favorite, still feels like you are around your home, you know? The other two neighborhoods didn't really match up to Galloping Gulch for me. I feel like the riding around there is pretty boring. It's all kind of flat and there's not as
as many routes as there are in Galloping Gulch. There's also just like not as many things to do, but they do have collectibles on the trails such as grapes, they have fishing areas, they also have those grills that I talked about. So I actually think the environment is pretty good. One thing I will say, as I've been playing a little bit more, obviously I haven't started my Let's Play or anything yet, that's gonna be coming next weekend. Because these neighborhoods actually do feel so large, especially Galloping Gulch for sure, it does feel like sometimes they can be quite empty. You will see other Sims riding around, you will see other Sims walking around, but I think because they are so large, Sims can literally be dotted like anywhere on those trails. So I feel like you just won't see them as often, which can go either way, honestly. Like if you wanna play more of a Lone Ranger sort of like cowboy story, then you can, because obviously you're not gonna be seeing people as much. However, if you wanted like a lot of interaction like on the trails and actually feeling like you were part of the community, which like I said, it feels as if the game wants it to be a really like tight knit community. But when you go out to some of the lots, like there's only a couple of the actual community members from Chestnut Ridge in those lots and it draws in like a lot of other sims such as occult sims, base game sims. You will probably see Don Lothario doing a cheeky little cowpoke dance in the dance barn multiple times, which honestly I kind of like. I like this character growth for Don Lothario. And also I think the lots are incredible. The builders that they chose for this, oh my word, the lots are stunning. I'm actually gonna have a community post up today going through like all of the videos that all of the builders have uploaded onto their channels. So keep an eye out for that if you wanna go check out like more of the behind the scenes, how they actually made their lots because they are incredible. But for me personally, this expansion pack really falls at the jump of gameplay. I've obviously talked about all the gameplay in my gameplay overview. Yesterday, I went out and kind of like explored the cross pack compatibility, how it worked with occults, how it worked with like other farm animals and all of that. And I will start off saying if farming is your thing, if you're into farming simulation games, if you absolutely adore Stardew Valley, I feel like you're gonna get a lot of use out of this, okay? We have prairie grass, obviously you can harvest that, you can use it to feed your cows and your llamas if you have cottage living, you can use it to feed your horses, you can take care of horses. If you do have cottage living, you have obviously those other animals. It really does feel like you can kind of have a working farm now. And if you like those kind of simulation games, I feel like you're gonna get replay value out of this. I feel like if you enjoy a rags to riches, you're gonna get replay value out of this. If you want to tell those stories, you're gonna find the replay value somewhere in this expansion pack. But I think that's the important thing to me personally. If you just buy horse ranch, yes, the horses are very, very in depth. Yes, the gameplay is quite fun. Like I think the breeding is a really cool element. You actually have to work really, really hard to get your horse's skills up if you wanna make like the most amount of money for your horse if you do choose to sell it on. I think running like a rescue ranch where horses can come to live a really happy life is so cute. I think the storytelling is there within the pack, but I think you really are gonna get the most fun out of it if you own previous packs. Which again, some could argue like that is an expansion that is making the farm element from cottage living and eco lifestyle like way more fun. I am a fan of that. Whereas if people only wanna get their hands on horses and horse ranch, I do feel as if the gameplay loop isn't the most interesting to me personally. And that's kind of brought on by the fact that yes, horses are done very well. The animations are gorgeous. Like the rides around town are beautiful. How many times can you send your Sims out on a trail though and kind of start doing like the same trails over and over again? And that actually seemed fun. I had the absolute same critique when it came to Snowy Escape. How many times can you send a Sim down a mountain snowboarding with it feeling fun? Don't get me wrong, I do still quite enjoy that even though Snowy Escape isn't my favorite because I think it's a very, very buggy pack and I don't use it as often as I kind of hoped I would. It's fun for the one-off gameplay and I feel like for me, that's the same as Horse Ranch. There were a lot of missed opportunities in this for me and that comes down to the fact that a lot of the gameplay outside of making and selling nectar and horses, like taking care of them and taking them out for rides, are mainly rabbit holes. Like that's kind of the rest of the pack. Yes, we have the bar, but that just works like any bar that we have in The Sims 4 already. Yes, you have the dance barn, which you can do like cowpoke dancing, but apart from the cowpoke dancing, there's not any really new gameplay when it comes to the dance hall. They don't host like a dance competition, which I think would have been really fun, like a little weekly 
event maybe on like a Saturday night or like nectar making classes would have been quite fun at the bar because they kind of have this running storyline that the bar is like the snobby place where the nectar makers enjoy and then the dance barn is like we welcome everyone even if you're a cowboy like come on down. The competitions for horses are obviously also just rabbit holes and it's not even like a Sims 3 rabbit hole where you can like see your horse in their position and you can choose to take risks and you can choose to go for broke and that kind of like gambles it a little bit more on whether you're gonna win. Your sim or your horse will just disappear off lot and then they'll come back, you'll get a notification being like this is where you placed, here's your simoleons, you now get to move on to the next rank. Which I do like the ranking system, I like the fact that you can make your horses champions, I think that's a really cool gameplay element. I would have really loved it if they had at least made a couple of the competitions actually active because outside the equestrian centre we have that semicircle, it has the barrels and it has the jumps. I feel like you could go there, you could just perform yourself, you didn't even have to see anyone else really performing. It didn't have to be like cottage living fairs where like you see the judge going through everyone because I do feel like if everyone on a horse, like say if there was like five competitors and you had to just sit and watch them, that wouldn't be like riveting gameplay. I would find it quite fun personally, especially if like the horse like said no and you'd be like ooh drama, like they're not gonna win. But I feel like it would suffer the same fate as like bowling in the game where it would take so many sim hours and it would just look at like really really glitchy. So even if you could just like watch your own sim perform or like even choose to like take risks on the little arrow that comes up and then it showed you like where the placement was, maybe you got a little event in the top left corner kind of like you do when a party is going on and it was like this is how your sim's performing, like they are in third place, do you want to try and go for broke and then maybe you get pushed off the podium. The community jobs, another missed opportunity, I was so hoping that these were going to be active when I saw them in the live stream I was like oh my god please be like cottage living errands or even some of the odd jobs from Sulani, like you can actually do the beachcombing one, I know a lot of those are off lot and they are just rabbit holes but just some element of like gameplay there where you could actually get your sims to train someone, even if you met up with like the sim and their horse like outside the equestrian centre and they were just like riding around the barrels and your sim was just there like leveling up but also teaching them, kind of like how you can teach kids to swim. Outside of horses and nectar making there just doesn't really seem to feel like there's anything really to do and that to me is a massive downside of this pack. Henford Hen over on Twitter actually tweeted me and said I'd love to see a video perhaps of you listing maybe five things you think should, could have come out of Horse Ranch to help it feel more fleshed out, maybe one of the things listed could be a new system to help expand the game overall. And actually one of you lot, Steffi, said I wish I had a way for Sims to ride horses without owning one. I will say you can actually do this, if you go to someone's house and they have a horse in their family, you can actually choose to like mount their horse after you've given an introduction to them, you can ride them, you can take them out for those little hacks, so that is a possibility. And I will say this idea for me personally expands the pack a little bit more, I would have loved to see it as official gameplay, but technically that does mean that you could like create a stable, because obviously we can build our own stables, which is a good thing, I'm glad horses don't have those really really bad overpowered stalls that they used to have in The Sims 3. So you could build a house, make it basically just like a big stable, have one sim, kind of like Sienna, and then just like seven horses living with that one sim, and then you could take your sims over there, you could start riding the horses, I do kind of wish that they had an actual like hire, maybe at the equestrian centre, maybe from Sienna because obviously she wants to like teach people the power of horses and also like how to ride. If you could officially hire them like either off her and like pay her money, like hey I want to like hire this horse into my family for like three days and then you could actually like fully control the horse, that would be sick. But you can technically do that and you can build those stables in like any world. We obviously don't have any new lot types in this expansion, do you think it would have been cool if they had added in a stable lot type? But you can technically do that gameplay if you want to, you obviously can't like add them to your family unless you basically steal the horse and then put them back in, which is just a lot of work for the player. And I will say I also enjoy nectar making, I do wish that there were different nectars available, I think the list is quite small, and also I do wish that when you got to like level 5 and you could pick your own berry nectar or your own fruit nectar, you can kind of choose which like fruit you actually want to make it with from your inventory. Right now the way that it works, you have to make sure that that is like the only fruit or the only berry very available in your sims inventory which is just 
just a little bit of a ball ache personally. Obviously you can sell these to Roberto Crinkletop, which I really, really like. I also love the lore that he is apparently Agnes's old husband and he's brought himself like back from the dead and now he's like living the little lonely rancher life. Exquisite lore. Cause he was actually called Robert, I think. And also Crumple Bottom Crinkle Top. How did I not make that connection? Thank you to everyone who pointed that out in my world and townie overview. I like that you can sell it to him. I like that he has a special recipe. I do think it's a get rich quick scheme within the game. I love the nectar making. I love that you can age it. I think that's really, really nice. However, I also wish that there was maybe a career made out of that or a career made out of horse training. They could both be freelancer careers where you get a horse, you train it up and you can sell it. Obviously you can do that. You can make yourself like, self-employed through your phone. So technically you can make that a career. I was just thinking a more official career that basically if a townie adopted a horse, they could call you up and be like, hey, I would like this horse training. Are you up for it? And then you end up getting like a bonus on top of like what they can actually sell that for or just if they want to keep it, they can pay you for your time. Or for the nectar making one, you work on your nectar skill and then under the freelancer, you check your jobs and maybe it says like, hey, the bar is out of like nectar. We need like six bottles bottles made for like this day, maybe like six bottles made in three days. And then you have to like deliver it to them and then they'll give you some money back. I feel like it was right there and like it just would have made this pack if you are only playing this pack just feel more filled out and actually give players like things to do outside of taking care for animals and kind of give you a goal. I like the aspirations. I do like that they're overarching. They feel like a Sims 3 aspiration. They feel like a lifetime aspiration even though I do think making like 100,000 nectar is gonna be really, really easy. They are both big goals and like building up to those goals is going to take a lot of gameplay. And that's the thing, I just feel like the gameplay that is in this pack is really good and it's really detailed, but only on specific areas. And then other missed opportunities for me, just like in general, I think we could have got some more filler objects, like kind of those small objects that you can place down just to make it feel like more Western and actually like community driven, especially in the dance hall or the bar. I'm thinking mechanical bulls, one of my favorite features from The Sims 3 would have loved to see those come back. Gambling or poker or casinos, I know not all of those would like fit within this theme, but we do have Sabak in Journey to Batu. I feel like they practically could have just added poker to the games table, have it play like Sabak, and I would have been happy with that. Pool tables, I also think could have come in this pack as like a little bar activity. For the kids, I also would have liked to see more things. Obviously, I quite like that kids can horse ride. Like I would have been bummed if that wasn't the case. However, they can just do it from the get-go, which I know some players are gonna be happy with. I personally would have preferred it if like you had to kind of teach your sim how to ride a horse, kind of like you can do with bikes. So the adult sim would just sort of like sit, hover, like watch them, talk to them, and then they'd like walk a little bit and then walk back and then you could praise them. But I also don't know like loads about horses. I did do horse riding as a child and my learning was basically someone walking with me with my horse on a lead and then us just going for like walks for about two years. A lemonade stand, I feel like I've mentioned it every pack recently. <laughs> I feel like it could have come in Easy Go Lifestyle, could have come in Cottage Living, could have come in Growing Together, could have come in this pack. I understand why children can't make nectar, but even that, I feel like squishing the grapes and like telling them about nectar like would have been fine. Like that would have added some more gameplay for the kids. Like they're not gonna be out selling it to their friends, are they? But maybe if they could like squish their own and then make like lemonade. I also think going out for like group rides, obviously you can now like ride bicycles together, which I think is such a cute little addition to the game. I know it's like a small thing, but you can't go out and like ride your horses like together in a group, which I think is very odd, especially for like families who are like big into horse riding. Everything kind of feels like it's its own thing and they don't really like integrate so well with each other, even within the pack. Like barrel racing is like its own little activity. Horse jumping is its own little activity. Like, yes, you can do all 
all of them in the same day as long as you don't like tire your horse out too much. And it does feel like there is a lot to do in a day, which I really like that about cottage living as well. And I got that same feeling here, but it's a lot to do in a day in like your own little solo bubble. And obviously I talked about this in my cross pack compatibility. I feel like the vet career just like is a huge oversight, but even with all those other things like added that I've talked about, I feel like I wouldn't have even needed like the vet career. Cause if they had given us a different career either with like the horse breeding or the horse training or even nectar, then I would have been like, yeah, you know what? Like fair, horses don't get sick. There's no cross compatibility with vets. Kind of sucky, but like I'll get over it. But I can't help but feel that is a big missed opportunity. Like being able to go for house calls if a horse does get sick. But I go more in depth into that in my cross pack compatibility. So if you want to check out that video, I'll link it down below. I just don't want to like repeat myself completely. I also saw on Twitter the other day, kind of tying into Roberto. I hadn't seen this like throughout all of my playthrough. I wasn't really checking things out at night all that often, but Evanly24 tweeted, why is Chestnut Ridge low key airy sometimes? Obviously I was playing without seasons, so I didn't see like a lot of the fog and stuff. Feels like everything is too silent, too still. When it's cloudy, it's cloudy. Also, Simguru George, what's with this unknown ghost horse? And there's literally a like horse with glowing eyes. It's up on a part of the world that you can't actually access. It's near the broken bridge that goes across the gulch. So like that's kind of the world design, which is another thing I really like. They've kind of like tied the world design into the storytelling. Like, oh, you can't reach this area because this bridge is broken. So they're adding storytelling into the actual limitations of the world. But imagine if there was like a little side quest that you had to do where you could like befriend the ghost horse, kind of like you could do with unicorns in The Sims 3. And then say that ghost horse was like Roberto's old horse and you had to like reconnect them back together. Oh my word. It would have been so good. I would have loved it. Unfortunately, you can't interact with that ghost horse. You can actually have ghost horses in your own family. They don't look quite as cool as that one, I will say, but you can ride them. You can still get their skills up. You can take them to competitions. You can basically do everything with a ghost horse that you can do with a regular horse. So that pretty much wraps it up for me. Do I, at the end of the day, feel like this pack is replayable? Yes. More so I feel if you have packs that integrate quite well and I feel like cottage living is definitely the biggest one for that. Obviously you have like the simple living lot trait, you have the cows and the llamas, you have the chickens, you can have like a full blown ranch or farm if you want to. I do think it's quite specific gameplay. Yes, I'm not gonna be adding a horse to like every single household that I have. I think the breeding, I think the training is where really that replayability comes from. I feel like there are a couple of different stories that you can tell within this pack if you are even just playing it solo -y. At the end of the day, I do feel like it is quite niche gameplay and I do feel like it could get repetitive over time. I obviously know that a lot of time, energy, effort went into this pack and you can see that in the horses. I don't disagree with that. I very much think you can tell just how much energy and love and effort the teams, specifically like the animation team has put into horses. However, I do think that that has slightly taken away from the rest of the pack and making it seem as fulfilled as an expansion pack personally to me should feel. Yes, we have all of these extras, but none of them are really filled out enough or go into as much detail as I personally would have preferred. This video wasn't made maliciously. It wasn't like me trying to tear into this pack for nothing. It's just, I think that balance needed to be found in this pack between yes, this hard work, dedication, things that you can see are done well, but also from a consumer standpoint, is that gonna reach like the price limit of what this expansion can be to people? And I do always think that feedback is important, whether that's critical or whether that's praise for certain things. But thank you all so, so much for tuning in. I know this is gonna be one of those packs that people have a lot of feelings about. I feel like a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings like me. I feel like a lot of people are gonna really love this pack. I feel like others are gonna be like, no, this should have been a game pack. And honestly, I feel like all of those opinions are completely valid. I just kind of wanted to talk about where this pack fell flat for me, what I actually think it did really, really well. This wasn't a video to like make you lot agree with me. It was kind of just a video for me to get everything out that I felt about it. And also to maybe just like give some critiques of what I would have liked to see where it did fall flat for me. So thank you all so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you. Obviously I love hearing all of your thoughts and opinions 
ones. I've talked about some of them here and they have come from comments of like all my other past videos or like over on Twitter. Feel free to have these discussions. Leave your comments down below what you really like, what you don't like about this pack other things that you would have loved to see in this pack. I appreciate you all as always, and I will speak to you all in my next one. Bye now.